We started very early because, you know, there's a lot of work going on in the country right now. Um, the team that we have here, the county security teams across the border, the same ones who are working and supporting the IBC to ensure that we are ready to uh, proceed uh, with the general elections next week. And as you know, this week, IBC has been distributing materials and preparing uh, at various polling stations to ensure that they are ready for the exercise next Tuesday. Uh, we met here, as uh, you were informed yesterday, to do a security review generally of the Rift Valley region, especially in view of um, uh, some occurrences the last two days where there were appearance of uh, leaflets uh, and uh, a bit of anxiety on, on the part of uh, one or two uh, regions of the uh, Rift Valley. I want to say here, first of all, that uh, we've had a very successful meeting here the last almost two hours with the, the entire security team in the, in the Rift Valley, led by the regional commissioner and the uh, regional police commander. And uh, we were here from the headquarters, myself, the Secretary of National Administration and the GSU Commandant, Mr. Kanja, uh, the ASTU Commandant and a number of uh, other senior officers from the security sector. We have been briefed effectively by all the 14 uh, county security teams uh, in Rift Valley. We have received information, uh, status reports on what is going on in each of the counties, their level of preparedness and what has gone on, and we are all uh, satisfied and happy about uh, the work that is going on. Secondly, we have been briefed by our colleagues from the National Police Service on uh, that incident of uh, rivulets. And I believe you know by now that uh, the police have got eight suspects or eight persons of interest in custody in connection with the circulation of those rivulets. Uh, we hope that uh, some of those will be taken to court today and investigations continue uh, uh, on that matter. We are here and, and that's why I think this opportunity is important to assure the country and assure all residents of Rift Valley that uh, we are fine. The, you know, Rift Valley is secure, we, it's quiet. We don't have evidence of any thing that should worry anyone uh, here. We have teams on the ground that have been working here for a long time. We are collecting intelligence in real time. That's why we were able to very quickly arrest eight suspects in connection with the circulation of uh, the leaflets. Uh, in addition to that, however, I need to confirm to the residents of Rift Valley that uh, the National Security Council has ordered uh, additional security resources uh, for this region. And so you are going to see increased deployment and patrol of more of our GSU teams here. Uh, we are placing more uh, personnel on the ground uh, here in Molo, in Kuresoi, um, in Nesuit, in a number of places around here, just to be ready. They, they are not here for any particular aggression. They are here to assure our Nigerian and to demonstrate to our Nigerian that we are ready to rise up to any challenge that uh, may, may come up. We are going to deploy additional personnel in Eldred, in Wasingishu, uh, and we are going to increase our surveillance and patrol uh, along, uh, you know, um, the borders of this region and, and, and the neighboring regions. And, and so, Wanaiji should be calm and confident that we will go ahead with the elections without a problem. We, we are totally ready. We have sufficient resources. We are going to deploy additional area resources uh, to enable our police teams uh, to move around uh, this region effectively and to be able to fly to uh, places where there are challenges. Uh, or if any challenge arises, that is, I don't think there will be, but in case there is any challenge, uh, our security teams will be able to move around this uh, region without a problem, without any inhibition. We have deployed additional resources, additional vehicles, and, and so on and so forth. I would like, finally, to assure uh, our people that, um, first of all, we've had a fairly peaceful uh, uh, campaign season. You can all agree that for the last um, uh, several months during the campaigns and so on, we have had a very peaceful um, time. 
uh, yeah, we've had very unfortunate remarks and comments being made here and there, but that's fine. Uh, the country has been calm, and we would like to remain this way uh, during this period on 9th and after 9th. Uh, as I've said uh, so many times before, we are ready as the security sector players to provide support to the IBC uh, to conduct the general elections on the 9th. We are ready totally uh, to do this, and we have sufficient resources. Every Kenyan, whether they live in the Rift Valley or elsewhere in the country, need to understand one thing. They are free to go and vote. They should wake up in the morning on 9th and exercise their democratic right to vote without intimidation, without fear of any kind. And they have nothing to fear because we have sufficient resources, we are sorted out and we are totally ready to support and work with them as they go about these activities. Uh, our brothers and sisters on the campaign trail, uh, I think many of them have traversed uh, you know, this country across the board and they have been all over holding public meetings. And we thank the Lord that we haven't had any serious incident as such and we have remained calm. Now we are on the home stretch. We're coming to the end of the campaign season. We urge them to be more responsible in their utterances, to think about the country, and to remember that, uh, you know, there will be Kenya after 9th of August. 9th is not the end of the world and it's not the end of Kenya. So, so everyone needs to be responsible in the manner in which they conduct themselves in the kind of things they say. Finally, two things. One, we have set up a multi-agents command center in Akuru. Um, that will be operating on a 24-7 basis. Uh, the regional commissioner is going to make all this information available to the press. There are phone numbers there. And we have asked all the county security teams in the Rift Valley to also equally uh, form command centers. And the information on the phone numbers and, and, and all that will be made available to the public. So that should there be any need to engage with the police or should there be any need for any member of the public to draw attention to anything, they can actually uh, make a call uh, to any one of those centers and give us the information we need and we will respond uh, uh, immediately. We are ready and prepared to respond uh, immediately. We have agreed with the teams here that the turnaround time in terms of responses from those command centers should be, uh, you know, as little as minutes so that we're able to answer and deal with any issues that come up uh, in any one of uh, part of our country. So we are ready to do this. And, and then uh, finally, um, we will continue to conduct the investigations uh, on this issue of the rivulets. I don't think there is anything that we need to be worried about. Uh, we trust our uh, police officers in the work they are doing, uh, and they will continue uh, to uh, carry on that investigation. However, I must caution our political leaders that we have decided that this year we are not going to behave like we have done sometimes in some uh, uh, cases before. where. Events happen, and if there is need for prosecution, we do not have sufficient information. Our security teams are now under firm instructions to ensure that we document, and I repeat, we document accurately and effectively every action, we record the utterances and everything else, so that should there be need for prosecution in future as we go along on some of these things. And I can tell from some of the utterances that are being made around that it's going to be almost impossible to avoid prosecution on some of the claims that are being made by political leaders. There, we will be ready as a security sector to provide evidence to sustain prosecution for crimes that are being conducted uh, by, 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 by leaders. So people need to be very careful about some of the things they're saying because we will be very responsible public officers and we will avail whatever information we have, whatever recordings we have, and, and uh, 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 whatever uh, information we gather in relation to some of these, uh, you know, utterances and activities. We've done so well so far, we are just days away from polling day. I, I want to ask our leaders, please exercise a sense of restraint, think about the country, uh, think about the language and the words that you're using before you speak out to the public. We do not want to burn our country just because there's an election next week. That, that's all I can say at the moment, but again, to assure uh, every Mwanainji who lives in Rift Valley. We, we are ready. We have staffed up. We have sufficient resources. We're moving around. You will see between now and Tuesday next week increased patrol and increased presence of our security officers, especially the GSU. Don't worry. They are just there to look after you. They are, they are there to make sure that you are fine, 
that you can exercise your democratic right without a problem. And we have opened these command centers in all counties so that you can report any incident or you can raise any particular issue you need to raise. You can also even speak directly to the regional command center uh, in Akuru and we'll be able to answer uh, whatever questions you ask or come to, uh, uh, to you if you need us to. That is it all, and thank you so much, uh, my colleagues. Uh, and uh, thank you, our friends, for uh, coming out during this very uh, chilly morning. I am I'm grateful, and I continue to thank our security officers in this region. As I said, our regional security team has done very well. Uh, and our security teams have risen up spectacularly to every challenge that we have dealt with in this particular region. Somebody asked me yesterday about the curfew uh, in Kerio Valley. I am not lifting the curfew. Like I said, the curfew is going to be for 45 days. It will remain in force. And you can see clearly we, how many guns we have collected and the activities that have gone there and how the place has been peaceful. We are going to sustain it and ensure that it remains that way until all one engine in that area vote and until we collect all the guns that we must collect that are in wrong hands. And then and, and we'll maintain other security operations in other areas uh, and, and keep the peace. In Marsabet, that's what we are going to do. We are not going to leave the curfew. We want it. In any case, Wananji themselves are telling us, please don't. Let's remain the way we are uh, until after the general elections and until we have completed the exercise that we are doing there of mopping up illegal firearms uh, uh, from, from the wrong hand. If I wasn't holding a public office, I would use very strong language, but I am conscious of the responsibilities I hold. And, and you know, in matter securities, we must have adults in the room, otherwise we will burn the country. I cannot speak the way some of our irresponsible political leaders are speaking. First of all, uh, the claim that uh, chiefs are, are being met or chiefs are, are being uh, misused is as ridiculous as it sounds. You know, it's, I have seen some of these politicians warning me against meeting chiefs and so on. It's like, can you imagine warning the Minister for Health against meeting doctors? Or warning the Minister for Education against meeting teachers? So who do you want me to meet? My colleagues in the security sector are chiefs. In fact, hardly a day passes without me speaking to a chief, receiving a call from a chief, or a DC, or a county commissioner. These are my colleagues. These are the people we work with. So P.S. Kibicho and myself, we have been meeting chiefs all along. I was actually amused yesterday when one of those uh, candidates was speaking from Transoya and warning me, warning uh, P.S. Gibicho, warning our county commissioner in Transoya against meeting chiefs. I was in Transoya last year to meet chiefs. They themselves can tell you there wasn't a single political discussion in that meeting. We were meeting because of the data we had just received in relation to uh, FGM and so on. And the chiefs are the people we are working with to deal with these issues. Every single national government policy that we are pushing at the grassroots level, we are working with the chiefs. 100% transition, the war against gender violence and FGM, now the triple threats, the surging numbers of HIV AIDS and so on, we are working with the chiefs. Now, how is it that, I, I, what, who am I supposed to meet if I'm not meeting the chiefs and not meeting the county commissioners? So, I, I don't want to speak uh, in a stronger uh, way than that and use stronger language than that, but it's uh, frustrating and unfortunate that those who are saying those things are actually supposed to be leaders. But I have asked my colleagues, all chiefs across the country, all my colleagues in Ingao, national government administration, at all levels, assistant chief to county commissioner to regional commissioner, ignore these people. We are not politicians. This country has been held together by the national government administration. In times like this, it is these security people who hold our country together. And they work so hard. Many of them hardly sleep. They work so hard to make sure that we are peaceful, to make sure that our country is, is stable, and we are moving forward to do what we have to do. Some of those claims are, 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 are outrageous and ridiculous. None of us is doing any of those things. We are meeting chiefs because they are our colleagues. That is the work we do. They are the people we work with. I, am, I, will, I call chiefs. I will call them, and they will continue to call me, and we will continue to meet them until we leave the offices we are holding. When we leave these offices, then, you know, and those who come after us, surely, I don't see how they'll work without meeting with the chiefs. So it's foolhardy for anybody to say, oh, we are meeting chiefs because we, are we meet chiefs all the time. That's the job we do. That's who we are supposed to work with. My sister, when I drove in this morning, we, we arrived here very early uh, in the morning in Molo, around 7 o'clock. Uh, by that time, just imagine, it was around 7 o'clock in the morning, two-thirds of the shops in Molo, Molo Town were open. 
uh, children who are going to school, people are going about their activities. My faith is in the people of Kenya as a leader. Our people have come of age. Our democracy is mature. People can tell nonsense from you know all those kinds of things and the claims that are being made around. Even the claim that you had yesterday that the leaflets were authored uh, by people from the office of the president. Now we have eight suspects in police custody and none of them is an employee of the office of the president. You know, some of our leaders look like they are inoculated against the truth, that they can never speak anything truthful. And then they keep imagining and saying things that they, they think make sense, when in actual fact, they can convince even a fool. The, the, the people of Kenya know what the truth is about these things. Let, let's just keep walking. That's why you have noticed that actually for this year, when you compare this election and 2017, I was even counting the other day, I have done less than half the press conferences I did in 2017 as acting minister for Interior at that time. Why? Because my wonderful colleagues in the field have been doing their work quietly. They have been working with communities, with the Nyumbakumi. Each one of these county commissioners you see here has created a multi agents election preparedness committee in their counties. And this is what we worked on at the beginning. Each one of these county commissioners is meeting with religious leaders, civic leaders, Nyumbakumi leaders, community policing, and everyone involved in their counties and discussing the peace and the stability of their county. Each one of these county commissioners has pulled in their deputy county commissioners from the sub-counties who have replicated the same committees at the sub-county level. And all this work is going on. Kenyans are having conversations among themselves on their country and they are focused on what they would like to see in their country. The, this, this garbage that is being spewed by politicians is just not going to uh, uh, affect our people. I am convinced beyond any shadow of doubt. I have intelligence officers here who will tell you Kenyans are determined to be peaceful. They love their country. They want a peaceful country. And, and, and you will see. I don't think there's going to be any problem. By now, we will have gotten information if there was going to be any challenge. Even though it took us hours to get a hold of those people, uh, the suspects that we now have, we are not going to pass judgment on them. As a law-abiding uh, government, we are going to take them to a court of law. That's what we are supposed to do. And then, then the, a decision will be made at that level and will continue. We've done the best we can. Some of us hardly sleep because we are engaged constantly in conversations with, with, with fellow Kenyans on this. I'm confident because I have faith in the citizens of this country. We are going to have a peaceful election. Well, I could have launched it anywhere, but you see the question is, we go by about three years ago, I mean, sorry, three months ago, we started talking about areas where we think uh, there are some vulnerabilities or some susceptibility to uh, uh, tensions and so on and so forth. And when leaflets came up, uh, we thought that it's important we address any anxieties in this part of our country. Uh, frankly speaking, we have stepped up deployment across the country. I was in Coast uh, Region two weeks ago. Uh, working with my colleagues there, Regional Commissioner John Erungata and the others, on how we can secure the entire of that coast region during this period uh, of elections. Every area of our country has got unique uh, needs and, and unique challenges, uh, depending on so many you know, uh, issues. So we, we go region by region. I mean, I could have done it in Mombasa, I could have done it in um, Garissa, but we chose to meet here uh, with my colleagues because, you know, first of all, this is our largest region. This is our most expansive region, as it were. This region has got 14 counties, and therefore it's only fair that we actually start in one of our largest uh, regions. Notice that has got only three counties. Uh, you know, and so on and so forth. So we thought this is the most expansive part of our country where we have 14 out of 47 counties uh, to deal with the situation and then the peculiar needs of this region to ensure that we are able to uh, uh, police it properly and manage it properly. That's why we came here. And how will the cyber crime department and that angle of your department Well, my colleagues at the NC4, uh, the DCI himself, and, uh, you know, they recently launched the cyber crime uh, infrastructure with the friends collaborator at DCI are doing a fantastic job. I think because you know I have to obey the law. I, I, I cannot speak for the DPP because that's an independent office and I cannot speak for the DCI directly because of the things that the DCI would like to do. I am aware for example that, that uh, the police through the DCI have opened up very serious investigations uh, you know following up several individuals who are spewing hate speech and so on and so forth. What we have resolved is we are going to live by the law. We will 
prepare our uh, paperwork, we'll prepare the files and turn them over to the DPP and, and ask that some of these people be prosecuted. You know, some people think that they will make certain statements or do certain things now and they think that after the elections we will forget. Some of these crimes are not actually covered uh, or affected by the statute of limitation. You can be prosecuted two years from now for some of the things you're engaging in at the moment. That's why we have resolved to ensure meticulous recording of what is going on around in some of these cases. Because I can tell clearly that some of the utterances that are being made by some people, including national political leaders, are going to be subject to prosecution at some point or other. And then they will be required as police or, uh, department, for example, or will be required as a security sector people to provide support to that kind of prosecution. And we will. I, have, I want to pr pronounce myself. We will. We are determined to rid our country of that kind of recklessness and, 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 and uh, uh, very responsible behavior on the part of uh, 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 political leaders. And, and you yourselves have seen some of the claims being made around here. I gave you an example of being warned against meeting chiefs. And assist. We have met chiefs all the time. That's who am I supposed to meet as Minister for Interior? We will not. We will not resort to those type of, uh, let me say, primitive acts that people else will do. This is a mature country. I mean, we enacted a constitution that guarantees freedoms. We are a confident government. We are not a makeshift government that is intimidated by criticism. We welcome criticism. I've said several times before, no amount of it or no amount of insults, even against us leaders of this government, is going to tempt us enough to interfere with the freedoms of the people of Kenya. The, the, the Kenyans decided and gave themselves a constitution that guarantees freedoms. We are privileged to be their leaders, and we have a duty and an obligation to respect the constitution, and we will. We will manage this country very responsibly because we know we are holding the positions we are holding in trust for the people of Kenya, for our children and our children's children. So we are not going to engage in activities that will claw back on the gains that we have made or claw back on the freedoms of our people and so on. What we ask is that people be responsible in the things they do, knowing as they must that the law draws a red line for all of us, including myself. None of us is above it. There, is area, there are areas beyond which you cannot go. And people should think about the country. We have a country to build, we have a country to secure, and we have a country to preserve for our children and our children's children. This momentary excitement because of an election should not uh, uh, provide an opportunity for us to ban our country by making very re reckless and very responsible utterances, or even actually blatantly lying to the people of Kenya. You know, like, like one leader was lying to the people of Kenya that we don't have national police reservists in the North Rift. The regional police commander is here. These people are here. They will tell you how many we have and so on, and work is going on. So let's be truthful people and do what we must do, knowing as we must at all times that we are privileged to hold these positions and we are serving the people we are serving. And by the grace of God, we must all the time move this country to the next level for our children and our children's children. Thank you. That's it for today. But as I tell you all the time, my colleagues are here from the security sector. When you have an active investigation on a sensitive matter like that, we don't make sideline commentaries because I don't want to interfere with the work that my colleagues are doing. Because when we get to a particular point where we feel we can give you an update, the Regional Commissioner for Rift Valley will give you an update. Give us hours. In a matter of hours, we will be somewhere with the investigation, and our Regional Commissioner will address you on that matter, or the Regional Police Commander.